The Michigan football staff is officially complete on field. Finally, yet again, here we go. Lou Esposito was officially uh, revealed and then shortly announced afterwards that he is the new defensive line coach. He comes aboard via Memphis, via Western Michigan. We'll talk about that. And as usual, because they we have our zero days without nonsense, Ohio State fans continue to show their rear ends when they try to come up with controversies for Michigan. Let's get into that as well on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Friday. We're back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire. Through USA Today Sports Media Group, and finally, Michigan has completed its staff once again, this time uh, finding a replacement for Greg Scruggs, who resigned after his uh, drunk driving incident. And uh, they go to someone who has a lot of familiarity with, uh, with the state, someone who has been spent the majority of his career in the state of Michigan, and that is uh, Lou Esposito, who was headed to Memphis to be co-defensive coordinator and defensive line coach, uh, but he had spent the last seven years uh, at Western Michigan as their defensive coordinator. So yet again, another defensive coordinator type who is on the staff, and he has also been a head coach. He was a head. He was the first head coach for Davenport University, which is also in Michigan. Uh, I can't tell you offhand what division that is or all of that, but it was the first head coach at Davenport. So. Even if that is a lower place, I mean, you've got a lot of experience. When you look at the staff, front to back, it's almost everyone has some kind of high-level experience, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. Because, and we'll get into more about Lou uh, here in a minute, but uh, because there are some interesting things. But you look, head coach Sharon Moore was an offensive coordinator the last couple of years. Bonafide just for one, you know, but still not sharing duties, but he also had the, well, he did share duties because he shared <laughs> head coaching duties for four games. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you have that for Sharon Moore. Then you have your offensive coordinator, Kirk Campbell, who was previously an offensive coordinator at Old Dominion. Then you have your tight ends coach, who was a uh, offensive coordinator at UMass. You have your wide receivers coach in Ron Bellamy, who was a head coach at West Bloomfield. You go to the other side of the ball, wait, or offensive line coach, I almost forgot. Grant Newsom is the only one who doesn't have that, right? Doesn't have that offensive coordinator, head coach uh, credence to him, but still. You go to defense, defensive coordinator, uh, Wink Martindale has been a longtime defensive coordinator and obviously did it in the NFL, comes from the NFL. Uh, you've got uh, Brian John Marie, the linebackers coach, was a former defensive coordinator at USF. Uh, you've got Lou Esposito, we just talked about was a defensive coordinator at Western Michigan and the head coach of Davenport. Uh, he was also a defensive coordinator at Ferris State. So he's, he's been around and he's been doing this for a while uh, just to uh, dem, dem, you know, be just a defensive line coach. So that's a good job there. And then you've got Le, uh, Lamar Morgan, defensive, uh, defensive line coach, or sorry, defensive backs coach, who was a defensive coordinator at... Uh, Defensive coordinator at, um, where, why am I blanking on Louisiana? Louisiana. Because uh, I started thinking the alma mater, because here's the thing is, Lou Esposito was headed to Memphis. He was there for uh, just a couple of months. That's where he played football. So Michigan lures him away for uh, a kind of a lesser position. Uh, so, like, obviously that sets him up kind of better for the future. Uh, but uh, it's, for someone who's, it's funny, because he's, he's a New Jersey native, yeah, he has spent most of his career in uh, most of his career in the state of Michigan because he's been uh, at uh, I don't know uh, he's been in Indi- started in Indiana uh, at St. Joseph College. Then he went you know and well, he was at uh, Western uh, Michigan. He was a defensive coordinator in 2004. I'm just reading the thing here before assuming uh, head coaching duties for the next five seasons. At St. Joseph Esposito, okay, some of this doesn't make sense when I just kind of say it out of context here. Uh, but, I mean, he, he's just kind of been all over the place, right? Uh, Davenport was uh, 2014 to 16, and then he went to Western Michigan, and he's been there pretty much ever since. So, it's um, – he and I think one of the th- important things is he's produced some really good players. Uh, 
NFL players. Uh, Paul Hazel from twenty uh, from twenty ten, Freddie Bishop tw- uh, twenty twelve, Robert Spillane twenty seventeen, AJ Thomas twenty one. Uh, Zaire, Zaire Barnes, 2022, Braden Fisk, 2022, uh, Treshawn Hayward, 2019 All-American linebacker. Uh, he's someone that I remember back then when he was at Western Michigan and he was uh, going to enter the transfer portal or I don't know if he, if he was going to or if he did or how that worked. I just remember he was on my list of like, hey, you got to go get that guy if you can. And uh, I, Ali Fayad was the uh, 2021 MAC Defensive Player of the Year. So he's... Uh, He's seen a lot of really good players, and he's got a lot of really good experience. Is it like crazy amazing experience? No, but neither is Sharon, was Sharon Moore before he came. So it's um, it's someone that knows what he's doing, which is an important thing. As far as uh, defenses are concerned, Western Michigan is uh, was 86th last year. Again, it's, I mean, it's hard to have a high-end defense. At a place like Western Michigan, 39th in 2022. All depends on the players. 21st in 2021. So, I mean, honestly, pretty good considering everything. Uh, 57th in uh, 2020. Uh, 2020 doesn't really count. So, we'll go to 2019. Uh, and uh, 87th in 2019. So, he, he built it up and then they had kind of a bad year last year. So that uh, that kind of tells you about the trajectories. And that's just him see, overseeing the whole defense. So it's pretty cool to see that uh, that he is certainly getting a, uh, a... That he's done it at a lower level and he's able to kind of uh, get it to, you know, get some higher end talent and, and all of that. So they were 77th in sacks last year. But if we start looking at the other years, they were 42nd with 31 the year beforehand. Uh, and sixth in 2021. Keep in mind, 2021, Michigan, you think like, oh man, they were really good at getting to the quarterback and all that. They were not on that level. 13 games, 43 sacks. If you look where Michigan is, I'm just going to have to search real quick. Michigan was 39th in 14 games with 34. So he can, he can get guys that can produce that. So that's good news. That's good to see. And all of that. So uh, welcome, Lou Esposito, uh, just a staff with just tons of experience. I didn't even mention JT Brown, but I, I don't really know much about his prowess, to be honest. He's been a special teams coordinator elsewhere, I believe. Division two. Anyhow, all right, let's, uh, let's talk about um, ridiculous Ohio Stateness. Their fans are, uh, they're trying to create a new narrative, and it doesn't work. And I'm going to tell you why. I tweeted about it because it was just like, I usually don't like to tweet about it about Ohio State fans, because it's just like, usually you just get all of them in your mentions and it's just annoying. I couldn't help myself. I had to. And we'll, so we'll talk about how ridiculous they are, and then we'll kind of use that to kind of go into some of the takeaways from Wednesday's press conference. Uh, we'll do all of that here in just a moment. But before we do, this episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes. With the leaders in below the waste room and clear out that winter, bu- winter bush with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0. And watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the code locked on for 20% off plus free shipping. After using Manscaped, I can finally say I've caught spring fever. Uh, introducing the season's champ, this Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Well, not to worry. This bad boy is waterproof. You can shave in the shower, in the bath, or even in the ocean. I don't shave in the ocean, all right? I love this thing because it comes with a compact case. I can take it where, with me wherever I go. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions either. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped Signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit plus Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft that signature look or clean up that neckline, there's always the right tools to get the job done. So tw- get 20% off and free shipping with the code LOCKDOWN at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code LOCKDOWN at Manscaped.com. Nothing like little spring cleaning in your pants. Um, so yeah, there's that, uh, if we're going to continue on in here just a moment, uh, but still 
There is uh, something else I got to tell you about, especially with uh, March Madness continuing to go on. It's happening, I think, literally right now as I speak. Uh, th- there's, uh, we've talked a little bit about daily fantasy sports. Well, there's an, the coolest, best way to do it that's just hit the market. And it's something that you don't do it against other people in, the, in a typical way, like against your friends, right? You play fantasy football. I was like rewatching a couple episodes of the league. The, you know, they're all playing against each other. You can play with them. That's the cool thing about it. So if your bracket is busted and you want to stay in the game, better together. It's the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork, uh, teamwork rather triumphs talent and you can play with your friends and not against them. You pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social daily fantasy sports movement. Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. It provides a sense of camaraderie and enhances the social experience of watching sports. It makes you realize that daily uh, fantasy sports alone is fun, but like a lot of other things, it is better with friends. It's an easy way to stay connected with your friends when you can't watch sports together in person and you've got the group chat, you got all that going. So it it makes it absolutely uh, a blast. So download Better Together, B-E-T. T O R together now from the app store and sign up using promo code locked on for a free $5 entry into any NCAA basketball contest. And you can play uh, again on better together with the code locked on because winning alone is fun, but it is better together. All right. That was a lot of stammer. <laughs> um, speaking of stammering, Ohio State fans have uh, shown uh, in the last, uh, I'd say, 36 hours that uh, they continue to be as uh, as sharp as a box of rocks here. Because, okay, so when we talk to, uh, and I, I actually have to go back. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Because you, we talked to, to Will Johnson. We talked to a couple other guys. And Will Johnson in, in uh, uh, the Wolverine put out something where uh, that's the Wolverine.com site that I love, obviously, uh, about, uh, I don't know if I can find it quickly here, about how the core of Michigan stayed together because of NIL. That, that's not kind of what I got from it, but... Uh, let me find like this is a setup here, and I know I'm stammery today. I don't I don't know why, but um, I, I I don't know what the quote is exactly. So he said it's easy to get tempted for sure, especially when you hear all the numbers and things like that. But we're so close. We got a group of guys that are so talented. It's something hard to pass up too. So we're really about staying together, keeping it together, getting better together. That's what our mindset is, and that's where we are standing. But here's the thing: is the headline for because I'm just gonna stop digressing. Uh, from trying to figure things out on my own. Uh, the headline from the Wolverine.com, Will Johnson, Michigan's NIL, the main reason, quote, the main reason Wolverine's kept core group together. So since then, there's been like this, since that came out, which I, I don't really recall that being actually like what he said. But then again, that's just what I don't recall. Since then, there's been just an outcry from Buckeye Nation calling out the, quote, hypocrisy and saying, but not Bill, LOL. Because, of course, we've talked about Ohio State really going all in for it, uh, going and getting Caleb Downs, Quinchon Judkins, all these, you know, Will Howard, all these top, top name uh, guys that were in the transfer portal. So there's been a couple things that have happened, right? The first, there's the bought, not built, because they are... Uh, their brain's so smooth that they can't put together any nuance or even think through things. NIL, it, in the way it is supposed to work, is that the players already on the team get to benefit from profiting off of their name, image, image, and likeness. The way it's worked in reality and the way that Michigan's been trying to do it is not to induce people to come to Michigan but to make it so that if you are at Michigan, then you get the slice of the pie, right? More in the spirit of what it's supposed to be. What has happened with other schools, and I'm not even saying Ohio State did this, but although I think Caleb Downs had said that he had made, uh, or 
it's him or Judkins or one of the two. Uh, I don't want to impugn either of them, but one of them said like they they made a bunch of money to come to Ohio State. Okay, so a lot of these guys, these Buckeyes, are coming up and they're starting to act like, oh, Michigan, you're acting like you're so high and mighty, but yet you bought your team. It's like, as I tweeted, there's a difference between maintaining the house you already have and building an annex, right? <laughs> and I don't know why they don't get this. So then this build built into something newer, and I was getting called out by some like, Michigan got nine transfers last year. Hmm. Like one person even said they, it's like, yeah, it's not like they came out of the goodness of their heart. So you mean to tell me that AJ Barner from Indiana, Josiah Stewart from, uh, <laughs> coastal Carolina, uh, it, and, uh, like Ernest Hausman from Nebraska, Ladarius Henderson, the, these guys that, that are, that we're talking about here. I mean, okay, Ernest Hausman was at one point the top guy in the transfer portal, so he, whatever. But all these other guys, like, Josiah Stewart is not, was not, like, a big name, right? It wasn't a Quinshawn Judkins or a Caleb Downs or whatever. They were looking for a place where they could win more and get more playing time, of which they got to do both. And, you know, maybe play for a national championship, which, by the way, they won. They cannot conceive whatsoever that Michigan is not doing what they are doing. There's nothing wrong per se. If Ohio state is starting to spend money to bring guys in, that is what everyone else out basically outside of Michigan is doing right now. Okay. So like a lot of you, I know a lot of you out there want Michigan to, you know, get on board because they are kind of getting left behind to some degree. That doesn't affect what happened last year. Might not affect what happens this year. It might, but it will, it will affect how the roster is kind of built down the road if rules don't change and all of that. But it is hilarious because they just cannot see that all what Michigan is doing at the moment is using NIL the way it was intended and using the transfer portal the way it was intended. You win some or you lose some. It's just, it's, it is hilarious to see them grasping to straws so much. They do not know what to do with a Michigan team that won a national championship. And that includes the staff in Columbus and why you're seeing things kind of going the way it's going there. It, it is, they are just grasping at every possible straw. Um, all right. Hopefully we get a little less stammering. I'm always like that when we do our Friday night episode. But um, let's get to uh, to some of the stuff that kind of came out of the uh, the Wednesday press conference. Where Michigan football goes from here? Uh, now that you got spring ball still underway, uh, so we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. But before we do this week's March Madness bracket highlight, is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Alabama Crimson Tide, and I don't give a piss about nothing but the Tide, baby, can only be described as a Pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have created a lane for themselves, entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country after taking down North Carolina in the Sweet 16. They'll look to take on Clemson for a you know, basketball version of Saban versus Dabo. And whoever wins that earns the trip to the Final Four for the first time in program history. It's just wild. So take that Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. I'll tell you what. Normally we do these shows at night because I have it more together. (laughs) This is not one of those episodes. I don't have it together today. Maybe it's because I haven't talked to anybody. It's been a lo- it's a, a lonesome day. Sarah's out with the boys. There's spring break going on. They're doing stuff. Talked to a guy. I picked up a mirror. Talked to the guy uh, that helped me load it. And that's pretty much it today. Someone said Zuri was pretty when I walked her. So that's been about it. Um, nonetheless, um, we are going to continue to try to talk. And... Um, 
so I didn't think there was anything in particularly groundbreaking coming out of Wednesday, uh, per se. Um, obviously, like the 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 big thing for me was that you had all you know all we asked all three guys: Colston, Loveland, K- Kenneth Grant, and Will Johnson. Why did you why did you come back to Michigan? Why didn't you explore the portal? This is where I kind of think that that Wolverine headline is kind of misleading. I think NIL helped them keep the core together, but they all kind of said like, we wanted to stay together because the guy playing next to me, like it, it, all of them say it like we, you know, yeah. Like Will says, Hey, it's tempting when people are putting numbers in front of you, it's tempting. But they were all like, they all said the same thing as Mason Graham. I understand what you want them to say, but they, uh, they all kind of had the same response of, we like the culture here we we take ownership of it. So why would we go anywhere else? Like that's my guy next to me. And they said that they all talk about their NIL deals and things are getting offered from other schools and that there is that kind of, they didn't say like, Hey, there's tampering going on, but they're kind of, you know, you kind of hear some of that. Um, some, some of the guys said like, I think Kenneth Grant was like, yeah, yeah there's still some stuff you know, that happens. But then um, I think it was Mason Graham actually on Monday who was like, yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. I just keep my head down and, and don't worry about any of this stuff. So it's, um, I think that's the key is I, I just think that this is where why Michigan's in a good spot is because you've got a group of guys that want to play together and more and more we're kind of feeling and hearing like it's, it's like they take pride in it because they really want a Sharon Moore to succeed. They don't want Michigan looked at it. This is going to be completely up to them, right? They don't want Michigan looked at as being like a one hit wonder with what happened last year. Now, obviously they had a climb. We talked ad nauseum for years about the climb and they achieved that. They made it to the summit. So then anything that happens from here is to stay at the summit. And they're not treated the same way as Georgia and some of these other teams. And especially when you lose a lot of the coaching staff, you lose a lot of these players that a lot of people, it's like, oh, you know, JJ McCarthy's he's a mid quarterback. Blake Corum is a mid running back. Rivals will say, you know, Jim Harbaugh is two and five against Ohio State. They love to say all that kind of stuff. But yet, you know, Michigan can't win without these people. So which one is it? You you can't seem to pick one. There's a lot of talent because I mean, like you look at all the players we've met with in the last. You know, I think we've just meeting with been meeting with players for like the last week. Donovan Edwards, Mason Graham. Will Johnson, Kenneth Grant, Colston Loveland. I mean, it's it's rife with star players, all people who should be drafted in the first two days, uh, especially if they, the ones that uh, will leave next year, right? Um, kind of building off of the defensive stuff, where we, we kept on hearing, because obviously, you know, Kenneth Grant and Will Johnson got questions about the defense. It really doesn't sound like there's really any... It's not like what Macari Page said, like, oh, it's completely different. Eh, it doesn't really sound like it is. Uh, so there's that. Um, young players that have been really standing out. You know, Etta has been a guy who's been getting a ton of mention, so I'm excited to see. And he's moved inside, so it'll be interesting to see. I, I would have liked to have seen him still outside. They don't have as many bodies there, I, I feel. But, you know, then again, they've got Cam Brandt and some, some others, so uh, I think it'll be interesting. But otherwise, I, I don't know that there was anything like particularly huge that comes out of it. Like, you know, like there's nothing really groundbreaking uh, coming out of spring ball at the moment, but uh, it, I am excited about the defense. It, it's interesting to see now that with the staff together, what this is going to look like. And um, I, I think that it's obviously a good thing that Michigan is continuing to have this transformational, not transactional thing. I, I And I still can't get over, I can't wrap it around my head how these Buckeye fans, why they seem to think that they found their gotcha moment with any of this. <laughs> like, and IL's working the way it's supposed to work. Oh, man. Nailed him. <laughs> so, uh, you keep doing you, Buckeyes. Anyway, all right, that's going to do it for us today just because that's, you know, we're just talking in circles almost and trying not to do that. So uh, we will be back tomorrow with the mailbag. Um, I know, I know how these things always go, but we're we're gonna do it. it's gonna be like a around noonish thing. That's how we're gonna make sure it gets done. So uh, continue to get your questions in. Put the call on Twitter on Wednesday. So 
Uh, we will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.